Twenty first precinct, Sergeant Waters. Well, who is this? Yeah. Oh, her daughter. Uh, yeah, she was here. Yeah. No, we sent her on away. What? Where is she supposed to go? Yeah. I see. You are in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. Okay. If you don't hear from us soon, let me know. No, don't worry about that. We'll take care of it. Yeah. Okay. Right away. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my day tour, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Immediately upon my arrival at the station house at 7.35, I signed the blotter and went into my office where I changed a uniform. Then I sat down at my desk and read reports and communications to bring myself up to date on the occurrences in the precinct during the previous 24 hours while I was off duty. At 8, I went out into the muster room and behind the desk to turn out the platoon for the day tour. Then I returned to my office to finish reading and signing the reports in time for the precinct messenger to take them to the 6th Division, which is located in the 17th Precinct Station House at 163 East 51st Street. Sector car number 2 came by the house at 9.30 and I went out on patrol of the precinct. It was 10 minutes after 11 when the car pulled up in front of the station house to let me out again. I crossed the sidewalk, walked up the three stone steps into the muster room where Lieutenant Gorman was desk officer and Sergeant Waters was on telephone switchboard duty. I headed around behind the desk to sign the blotter. Hello, Captain. Sergeant? First precinct, Sergeant Waters. Hello, Red. Captain? Okay, What's right doing, Red? It's a quiet tour, Captain. Good. Okay. A teletype order came over. They shifted borough commanders in Queens and the Bronx. Just traded jobs between them? Oh, yes, sir. Effective 8 a.m. tomorrow. Oh. Wonder if they like the new assignment. Well, there's no sense you worrying about it, Red. Uh, no, sir. I guess there isn't. I'll be in my office. Yes, sir. How's your wife, Sergeant? Better, Captain. How much longer does the doctor say she'll have to stay in the hospital? Till the end of the week, that's all. That's good. Mi otra hija lo escribió. 
Her other daughter wrote down the address. Aquí. Aquí, en este papel. It's on the west side. Señora, este es el east side. Está en el west side. Al otro lado del parque. Oh, en el otro lado del parque. Sí, el parque central. Uh, ¿Tiene dinero para llegar allá? Oh, sí, sí, tengo dinero. Mi hija me dio dinero para tomar un taxi del subway, pero me perdí, no sabía dónde estaba. Her other daughter gave her money to take a cab when she got out of the subway. Uh, Sergeant, get Fallon out here to put her in a cab. Yes, sir. See that the cab driver gets the right address. Yes, sir. She's got it written down. Le diré a un policía que le ponga en un taxi, señor. Ay, gracias, qué bueno, qué bien. Estoy muy agradecida. Estaba perdida, no sabía dónde estaba. Ok. Señora, el policía estará con usted en un momento. Hey, mister. Where are you heading for? Uh, for me? Yeah, where are you going? Uh, to the detectives. I'm going up to the detectives. Through the back room, up the stairs to the second floor. Okay, thanks a lot. Oh, siento mucho haberles causado tanta molestia. Está bien, señora. What's the trouble now, Captain? Es que no me gusta molestar a nadie. Apologizing for bothering us. Oh. Did a guy in a brown sports jacket just come in here? Who are you? I'm Detective Ed Weiss, my narcotics squad. My partner and I were cruising by and spotted this pusher we know. I thought I saw him duck in here. Oh, yeah. Following a brown sports jacket asked for the detective. For the detective? I sent him upstairs. He's running for me, and he runs right into the police station. I'm Captain Kennelly Weiss. You come upstairs with me. Oh, yes, sir. Sergeant, take care of her until Fallon comes out. Yes, sir. Come on, Weiss. Yes, sir. Oh, Lieutenant. Yes. If he comes back this way, don't let him get out. We won't. That's the only way out, isn't it, Captain? Past the desk? Yes, that's the only way. How do you happen to run in here? Well, we were driving by on the corner, Captain. I spotted him. I told my partner to stop the car, and he must have seen us at the same time. He started walking faster and up the stairs. Yes, sir. I got out of the car and took after him on foot. It was a one-way street going the wrong way, so my partner drove the car around the next block in case I couldn't catch up with him. Why'd he come in here? I don't know, Captain. I guess he couldn't figure in any place else to go. Why did he ask for the... Well, he had to ask for something to get by the desk. Vitaly, did a fellow in a brown sports jacket just come in here? No, Captain. No one just came in here. Is Lieutenant King in his office? Yes, sir, he's in there. Yes. Captain Kennelly. Come in, Captain. Uh, Matt, this is Detective Ed Weiss of the Narcotic Squad. Lieutenant Matt King, 21st Squad Commander. Lieutenant? Oh. Uh, he's got a suspect loose in the building, Matt. A suspect? Yes, sir. Where in the building? He stopped at the desk a minute ago and asked for the detectives. Desk officer sent him upstairs. Well, what do you want to come up here for? You got me, Lieutenant. Weiss was after him on the street. His partner drove the car around the block to the other end of the street to stop him there in case he got through. He just came into the station house. He didn't come into the squad room, did he? No, Vitaly and Howard are out there. They said he didn't. Did he come upstairs? Well, he went through the back room towards the stairs. Could have come up the stairs, or he could have headed out and back to the cells. Or down to the locker rooms. Well, it's the first time I've ever heard of a cop chasing a suspect into the station house. Well, it's got to be a first time for everything, man. Well, there's no way out except the way he came in. Yes, that's the only way he can go. Let me talk to the desk officer in a minute. Go ahead, Captain. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Uh, this is Captain Kennelly. You didn't see anything of that boy in the brown sports jacket, did you? No, sir. Let's come back this way. Who's the attendant on the job this tour? Bailey, Captain. Well, you better check Bailey and see if he didn't head back toward the cells instead of coming upstairs. Yes, sir, I will. And grab him if he tries to get out that way, will you? Yes, sir, I'll grab him. Well, we'll see if we can find him. He must have been carrying, or else he would have stopped. Back through there are the beds for the detectives. Mm -hmm. But he'd have had to come into the squad room to get through there. You fellas stick around. I might need you. Yes, sir. Yes, Lieutenant. The only other thing we've got on this floor is old files from the detective squad. Go ahead. Yes, sir. That door is always locked, though. Sit down that way. Hold it. It's not locked now. It sure isn't. Half open. How'd he get in there? I don't know. Why? 
You go down and take the far side of the door. I'm right there. Captain, you take this side, okay? Okay. I'll kick the door open the rest of the way. Oh, why? How bad is this boy? He's got two felony convictions, Lieutenant. I don't think he'd be so happy about a third one. Is he a user as well as a pusher? Yes, sir, he's a user. Think he's armed? One of his convictions was on a gun charge. All right, let's get set.
at the door, but tell me. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's go by the lockers first. There's a couple of empty ones there. All right. Open them up. You might have dropped the stuff in there. Look under the bed. Nope. How about those two closets? All right. This guy ought to get ten years. No, twenty. Ten would be too good for him. What's in this closet? Bed linen, I think. And blankets. It's a clinic-like. I go to a clinic. 
Different doctor every time. Where's the clinic? Near my house there. Where near your house? What's well, a clinic? Some hospital. I don't know. It's just around the corner from my house. What street is it on? I don't know. It's just near my house. Penicillin you've been taking, huh? Yeah. Yeah, penicillin, something like that. Let me see that arm again. Never heard of anybody getting penicillin shots in the veins. All right, maybe it wasn't penicillin. Maybe it was something else. I don't know. I don't know what they shoot into me. You go to a doctor, you don't ask questions. Or you want it to get well. Nothing in a closet, Lieutenant. What'd you do with it, Arthur? What'd I do with what? The stuff you were carrying. I wasn't carrying anything. Now, look, Arthur. You just made a buy right before we saw you. We stopped the car, I got out, and you took off. Now, if you weren't carrying anything, you wouldn't have been in such a hurry. Now, what did you do with it, Arthur? I wasn't carrying anything. Why did you take off? Because I, I wasn't in any mood for conversation. Where are you living now, Arthur? Well, I, I still live in the same place, up there on uh, 113th Street. You know where I live. No, you don't live in the same place. I was by there last week. I stopped in to see you. Super told me you'd move. He did? He did. Where do you live now? Oh, the Super was lying. He knows I live there. He was lying. Why would he want to lie? He likes to lie. He gets a kick out of it. He likes to get people in trouble with his lies. Where do you live now, Arthur? Ah. Oh. Where? All right, up in the Bronx. I moved to the Bronx. Where in the Bronx? 2142 Vernon Avenue. Are you sure of that? Well, sure, I'm sure. I wouldn't tell you if I wasn't sure. Between what streets? Between Metzger and Naomi. Which house is it? It's on the corner there, right on the corner of Naomi. What kind of building is it? Well, what do you mean, what kind of building is it? it it's a house. How many stories? Four. Four floors. What floor do you live on? The second. The second in the rear. You live there by yourself? Yeah, all by myself. I got the room all by myself. Just a furnished room? It's uh, two rooms. It's a living room and a small bedroom. You know the building, Captain? Yeah, I know it. Well, I, I got the key for the place. I got the key in my pocket. Uh, you, you, you saw the key when you searched me there, didn't you? Yeah, I saw the key. Well, that's uh, that's the key to that place. Well, what are we going to find there, Arthur? What do you mean? What are you going to find there? I mean, have you got any goods up there? I told you I was out of that business. And that—that's from penicillin, huh? All right. It's not from penicillin. It's not from penicillin, and you're not out of the business. Yeah, I'm out of the business. I... Oh, look, I'm only using. See, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not pushing. Not anymore. Are you working, Arthur? Yeah. Where? Well, here and there, odd jobs. For instance? Well, I pick up a day's work here and there. How do you expect me to know specific? Arthur, what did you do with the stuff? I didn't do nothing with it. Because I didn't have any. You came into this station house loaded with H, Arthur. Now, where is it? Oh, now, what do you want from me? I didn't. What we want from you is what you did with it. Where'd you throw it? I didn't have any. Now, look, we're going to search this place from top to bottom, Arthur. We've been crawling around in dust behind old filing cabinets and under beds looking for you for half an hour now. If you make us uh, crawl around some more, you're going to owe me a new suit. Well, I'll crawl around if you want. What do I care? What are we going to find up in that flat, Arthur? I don't know. Dirty laundry. You've got the works up there, haven't you? You've got enough stuff to take care of yourself, haven't you? That's good enough for a conviction. Now, what did you do with what you had in your pockets? Yeah. Yeah, you guys are going to keep uh, pestering me until you get an answer, aren't you? You want to know the truth? Yeah. <sighs> All right. All right, I'll give you an answer. Of all the times I'm walking down the street loaded to the gills, and this time they make me. A car pulls up, I make them, and they make me. I see this here guy get out, and he takes out after me. What am I going to do? Here I am, loaded to the gills, every pocket. Why did you come into the police station? Wait, wait. I saw one of them come after me, and I saw the other one stay in the car. I, I knew what he was going to do. He was going to go around the block and come meet me the other way. So I didn't know any of those stores. The only thing in the block was, heaven forbid, a police station. 
Oh, I figured I'd take my chance. I'd go inside. Where else could I go? I figured the guy that was walking behind me might figure that was the last place in the world I would go. He might figure the last place. He might just pass it up and go on down the block. So I came inside the police station. Yeah, and you were standing in there when I came in, huh? Yes, I was right there. Talking to some Spanish lady. Yeah, that's right. So I asked where the detectives were. That was the first thing that uh, came into my mind. And you said, upstairs. So I figured you said, upstairs, so I'd go downstairs. So I came down here, and there wasn't anybody in the locker room, so... So this is where I came. What did you do with the stuff you had in your pockets? Well, it was a shame what I did with it. A plain shame. What? I took it back there, and I... I flushed it down the toilet. Did you? Every last nickel's worth of it. You know how much I had? I had $180 in that stuff. I just made the buy this morning. $180. Good, cold, hard United States cash. Where'd it go? Down the drain. Down the drain. Every last nickel's worth. Oh, boy, the luck I got. The biggest buy I ever made. Five minutes later, I get hooked. I'm on my way. Just when I was getting set up good in business. Oh, I don't know. It just ain't worthwhile. Nothing's worthwhile. Nothing. You break your neck to work. You make a buck, and where do you wind up? You wind up making heroes out of four cops. Big heroes. Arthur, if I had to depend upon you to be a hero, I'd quit tomorrow. First Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Oh, wait a minute, what's the address? Yeah. All right. Now, what's the trouble there? There's gas leaking. And so it goes. Around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh and blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or... The brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the Police Department, City of New York. Everett Sloan on the role of Captain Kennelly, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Featured in tonight's cast were Bryna Rayburn, Billy Redfield, Harold Stone, Santos Ortega, John Larkin, and Frank Mars. Written and directed by Stanley Niss. Produced for CBS Radio by John Ives. Arcana speaking.